brother! Today it is no secret that we here at Super Carlin Brothers kind of love Gilderoy Lockhart. <laughs> Or should I say, love laughing at Lockhart. He's just such a wonderful, tremendous doofus. The odd thing is, it really doesn't seem like that big of a mystery to the other professors at Hogwarts that this guy is like a total fraud. That's settled. We'll leave you to deal with the monster, Gilderoy. Your skills, after all, are legend. Oh, burn! I love McGonagall Burns. But also the school was under attack by a giant snake in that very moment, so questionable timing, but I love it either way. But for today, I want to tackle the question, why on God's lilac earth would Dumbledore hire Lockhart? And this is actually more of a twofold question. Like, of course, one, why would Dumbledore hire him? But two, why would Lockhart take this job? Like, we ask why Dumbledore would hire him, but just based on his resume alone, like, certainly he's qualified for the job. At this point in his career, Lockhart is a pretty successful wizard, and sure, it's kind of in the same way that, like, Grumpy Cat is successful at being a cat. He looks grumpy, and he's famous for it, but really it's just a muscular condition in his face that causes him to frown all the time, and that's what he's famous for. The world thinks he's a grumpy cat, but he isn't really a grumpy cat. But does that really matter? I'm not gonna lie, I feel like that analogy ended up working a lot better than I originally intended it. Point is, teaching is probably not the profession that's going to bring him the most amount of glory, and that's clearly what he's after. So why take this job? On the other hand, he knows that any job that would yield significant glory would also probably end in ultimate death. So maybe he's exactly where he needs to be, or at least so he thought. Oblivious! Ah! Yeah. That adds up. But going back to his early days, Lockhart was in Ravenclaw, the house that produced the most dark wizards that ever shared a body with Voldemort. You know what they say, there's not a witch or wizard who went bad and shared a body with Voldemort who wasn't in Ravenclaw. Gosh, my British accent's getting good. Honestly, that has nothing to do with this. I just feel like it needs to be brought up more often. Gotta watch out for those Ravenclaws. But let's get back on track. Ravenclaw is supposed to be where the smart kids go and Lockhart doesn't exactly seem to fit that bill. So sorry, dozed off. What have I missed? The thing about Lockhart is that he is just the classic case of someone who is very smart, but also very lazy. Like if he would just put in some effort at all, he probably would be a very good wizard. In fact, we even have a clear example of this exact phenomenon happening with memory charms. He works very hard to master them and maybe is the actual best at them. Even his backfired spell worked remarkably well. Like he really put some mustard in into it. And not even like yellow mustard, like spicy brown mustard that he got at like a expensive delicatessen. Maybe even threw some roast beef in there. Anyone else getting hungry? Either way, the people he is hoodwinking aren't just like schmoes. These are actual good wizards who are actually good at defense against the dark arts and he is overcoming them. But alas, Earwax. This is the only spell he ever becomes good at. The reasoning for this actually goes all the way back to old Gilderoy's childhood where he was the son of a witch mother and a muggle father. They had two daughters and their youngest and only son, Gilderoy. He was not only the only boy, but the only child in the family to show any kind of magical ability at all. Which, as you can imagine, went straight to his head faster than a roast beef and mustard sandwich. I got one. And so what did this lead Lockhart to think? That he was the most specialist boy in the whole world. Pretty obvious. It's really not. But in his mind, he was special simply because he could do magic. The thing that young Gilderoy so tragically failed to realize is that even though his ability to do magic made him special in his family, that every other kid at Hogwarts can also do magic. It would be like showing up at the Olympics and thinking all of the other athletes were going to be so impressed with how high you can jump. Naturally, this was a horrible shock for him when he arrived at school thinking he was going to have a hero's welcome, only to find out that he's kind of middle of the pack, kind of average. Well, maybe actually a little above average when it comes to talent, but again, unwilling to apply himself. Basically, if he wasn't already the best at something or couldn't receive prizes, praise, or popularity, from something, 
He just didn't want to participate at all. Of course though, when that is your approach to everything, it becomes very difficult to naturally receive praise, prizes, and popularity. Unless of course you are Gilderoy Lockhart and not being popular didn't stop him from acting like he was popular and orchestrating elaborate ways of proving it. For example, he once carved his signature across the entirety of the Quidditch pitch, sent himself 800 Valentine's Day cards and cast a big projection of his face above buildings. Kind of like the Dark Mark if the Dark Mark had sparkly teeth and flowing locks. Can't imagine why this didn't catch on. Although I'm actually kind of having a hard time understanding how he didn't become popular after pulling off stunts like this. Like, don't all these things kind of remind you of the Weasley twins? Like they pull pranks and they're popular. I guess maybe it's because they're focusing their pranks on someone else and not bolstering their own popularity. And you know what? That's exactly what's happening. Gilderoy is pranking himself. In school, it's really the only reputation he ever actually earned. It's not being popular despite trying so hard to be. Which is why after he graduated, it became such a shock to all of his former classmates that he was being found all over the world, saving villages from dangerous creatures and stuff. Dumbledore himself was especially surprised, not because he had misjudged Lockhart's talents by any stretch, but because he actually knew two of the people who had saved the towns from the evil beasts and stuff. So he caught on to Lockhart pretty quickly and did the only logical thing, hire him to come and teach his students. Now, my personal reasoning for so long as to why Dumbledore would have hired this buffoon is basically just to show Harry what he could become if he's not careful. And let's face it, it's certainly not beyond Dumbledore to hire someone specifically for Harry's benefit. Slughorn, anyone? Although it should be noted that no fewer than three of Harry's other Defense Against the Dark Arts teachers definitely wanted him dead. Dumbledore had to balance those scales somehow. This one will hate him, this one will love him. He can have a real mentor this year, but only because he's a werewolf and could accidentally kill him. Eventually we'll have one that teaches him a lot, but definitely wants him dead. Then we'll hire the devil herself, see how that goes. And then we'll cap it all off with the man who's hated Harry since the day he was born. Oh, Dumbledore, you've done it again. But if we go back to the Slughorn, both him and Lockhart's hirings were very similar in that Dumbledore used Harry as a lure for both of them. When we asked earlier why Professor Lockhart would even take this job when he's already so famous, the answer is none other than the fame of teaching Harry Potter. Dumbledore basically tricked Lockhart into taking the position under the idea that teaching Harry would essentially seal his fame forever. But actually his real plan was to have him on a daily basis try to perform even the most basic of spells failing over and over and once and for all proving him to be a fraud. Which I agree, great plan, but how do you think the older students preparing for their OWLs and NEWTs felt about this? Like yes, Dumbledore, I'm so glad that you took an entire year to stop a popular guy from publishing popular books and all, but like, I kind of have some important exams to be preparing for that could affect the rest of my life and family and career and stuff. Also, I couldn't help but notice that it says here on Pottermore that you already knew what he was doing was the scam and knew the victims and are a member of the Council of Wizards that doles out judgment and could have cleared this up way sooner, but whatever, at least Harry Potter, nicest kid ever, didn't turn out to be a jerk. I can't be an horror now, but at least that happened. Justice. Dumbledore's actual explanation for this long-winded plan at the expense of his students is that there is plenty to be learned even from a bad teacher. What not to do, how not to be. And while I can kind of see what he's going for here, what I really want in a teacher is for them to show me exactly how to do this stuff. Like, could you imagine this flying in any other class? Professor McGonagall? Chronicle, could you show me that wand movement again? Well, certainly I could, but how about instead I just tell you that it is not this? Does that help? It seems especially unhelpful in Defense Against the Dark Arts. Like, can you even imagine being like up against some kind of dark creature? Okay. Okay, what did Professor Lockhart say again? I didn't get rid of the band and banshee by smiling at them. Okay, great. Definitely not smiling. What's next? Uh, I think that was the whole lesson. Uh, maybe try telling it your favorite color was lilac? Lilac! But there you go, Jay. That is the real reason why Dumbledore hired Lockhart and why he was even willing to take the job to begin with. For my question of the day, what's your favorite Gilderoy Lockhart moment and who is your favorite Defense Against the Dark Arts professor? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some 
some more Harry Potter action from us, you can click right here to see us rank the Defense Against the Dark Arts professors, or right here to see another super long-winded plan from Dumbledore about how he was going to kill Harry. But Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.